Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to the Blue Earth County Board of Commissioners meeting of March 8th. Uh, we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have ahead of us the, what, the agenda review. Well, Mr. Chair, there are no changes to the agenda today. Move to approve. Second. It's been moved and second. Discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Okay. We have in front of us now the uh, County Ditch 35 public hearing. Um, continuation of our February 22nd, 2022 uh, on County Ditch 35. Now I'll hear from staff on the progress. Uh, Craig Austin. Off the table. Okay. So shall we move to take that off the table, Bob? Oh. Or? Um, you, you certainly could. Sure. Uh, um, okay. I'll move to take it off the table, table. for discussion. Second. It's been moved and second to take it off the table. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed carries. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um Purpose of today's hearing, Blue Earth County Ditch 35 is located in the north central portion of Mapleton Township in the southeast of the city of Mapleton. The primary purpose of the proposed improvement is to address problematic sloughing and sediment issues by rebuilding portions of the open ditch. The project includes a new lateral <coughs> in the northeast portion of the watershed. Today's hearing is the continuation of the February 26, 2nd, 2025 final hearing. It was continued after a landowner brought forward concerns that needed further discussion with the engineer and staff to be resolved. After discussions with the landowner, we were unable to resolve the concerns before today's continuance. Uh, engineer Chuck Brandle is here to outline the, the next steps of what, 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 we, what we plan. Um, it, since it is uncertain how long it will take to resolve this issue, some of the potential solutions will require new notices to landowners. We are requesting uh, that the board continue this hearing to a date and time to be determined. Okay. Thank you, Thank, thank you, Craig. Okay, Chuck? Uh, good morning. Good morning, Chuck. Uh, Chuck Brando with ISG. I have Joe Donkers with me. Um, so we did put together a few options. The, what, what was brought up is the Jaeger properties just east of where the open ditch is being proposed to be um, uh, repaired and improved. Uh, we were proposing to abandon a portion of the tile through those properties and um, they have uh, somewhat objected to that. So we're trying to figure out a couple solutions for them. We put together a couple different options. Well, first backing up, without the abandonment of that line, the um, the separable maintenance is lowered and the cost benefit ratio is is in jeopardy of, of being um, meeting the requirements of the statute so if you look at a couple diff so we put together a couple different options to um, um, instead of abandoning that line it could be downsized um, downsized to match the rest of the capacity of the system uh, we presented three options to the uh, Jaeger family through their attorney, uh, Mr. Zimmerly, and then we also did discuss an option to potentially pay them a damage to abandon that line. Um, I've not received back any feedback. I, I've received back a little bit of feedback that, that they're still reviewing those options, and I think if one of those options is chosen, it may change the, the benefits. Um, so our recommendation is to, to continue that. Let us take a little bit more time and, and work that out. If there isn't a, a solution for uh, the abandonment of that line, we may have to go back and look at some of the previous options that we discussed, um, widening the ditch, maybe a different alignment for the pipe, some of those options. But um, I think that I think the, the landowners all, I assume, want the project to move forward, including the Jaegers. They just want to make sure that their line is, is covered and they're, they're, they're not left without a, a public line. Um, in discussions with uh, um, 
a few of the, the, the people uh, on, the, on the project and I did to actually talk to the viewers about that potential damage. One note that we had was that the viewers should potentially update their redetermination cost to 2022 price cost. So that'd be my recommendation that we continue the project, um, allow us to work with the Jaegers and their attorney and come back um, once we have something solved. I'd like it to be as soon as possible um, you know this this ditch is in poor shape we'd like to get it repaired and fixed and if we could if we could get something moving this year that would be the, the most beneficial for the system okay. Thanks, Chuck. <clears throat> thank you Chuck thank and, you um, at this point um, you know we've heard from the engineer and the drainage staff and after further discussion with the landowner as I stated this there is not a solution it has been recommended to continue the hearing to a date and a time to be determined uh, so this being said, that being said, this is a public hearing, so we will allow uh, public comment. If you have new information to share and like to comment, please come to the podium and state your name and address for the record. For those participating via Zoom, you can unmute your line by clicking the microphone button on the bottom of your computer screen or pressing star six on your phone. We also ask that you keep all comments to three minutes or less. Um, I don't know if there's anybody here that wishes to come to the podium to state your name and address. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Jody Swanson, 110 Pheasant Drive, Mankato, Minnesota. I'm also a um, District 5 um, citizen and a near lifelong resident of Blue Earth County. This issue drew my attention when I saw the article in the Free Press two weeks after the last hearing, which really alarmed me. Front page story, ditch debate, big farm drainage upgrade draws fire. And as I read it, it seemed like we had, du again, dueling experts. You know, on one side we had the you know respected local engineers and what seemed like the support of the county, and the other side, you know, we had the commissioner of the Minnesota Department of, of Natural Resources, um, Minneapolis engineering firms, and various consumer groups. And I I found myself um, alarmed by the article because it seemed like, gee, you know, here in Blue Earth County, we've been very concerned about our watersheds and our clean water, um, you know, for quite a while. You know, just a, a few months earlier, in November of last year, we have another free press article which talks about the uptake in Blue Earth County's um, polluted rivers in regards to Minnesota pollution control, you know, identifies 140 um, incidences of water quality issues in Blue Earth County and I thought gee you know we've got this uh, a ditch drainage system which clearly needs to be repaired um, can't we use this as an opportunity you know to really improve the system you know not just maybe you know hopefully you know get rid of a little erosion but hopefully improve things this this is really an opportunity you know that um, that I, w I would really encourage um, you know um, the drainage authority you know to pause my concern is that perhaps during COVID you know this this petition came forward right before the beginning of COVID and it made it hard to bring the right parties together to do the creative collaboration you know perhaps that's possible to make this a win-win you know a win for the farmers a win for the rivers and the win and, and, the, and a win for the rest of us that need both of and all of those things you know to to come together you know the the statute that I believe you know it has has been referenced that that the the the, um, the threshold you have to um, be able to be comfortable with you know is 103.5 um, 0.015 and the considerations before the drainage work is done and specifically sub um, division one talking about the environmental aspects and the public benefit and, and it includes you know downstream peak flows and flooding protecting or improving water quality and include you know the effects on wetlands, the effects on water quality, the effects on fish and wildlife, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure you know this you know, much much better than I do. And so 
I really ask you to be creative in your approaches. What are our tools you know, that we can do? To, and I appreciate, I'm happy that this project is going to get a little more time and a little more thought. You know, perhaps instead of you know, asking you know, a, a farm manager to sign off, you know, perhaps we go to the person that owns that land. You know, and hopefully, you know, whether it be land swapping, you know, we need land, we need water storage right on our lands. We need that filtration. We don't, Blue Earth County doesn't want to continue to be this black spot in regards to, you know, what's going into our rivers, into the Minnesota eventually, and even the Mississippi River. You know, this is an opportunity. Let's make this be something that we can really be proud of. Maybe we even can have drainage and naming rights. You know, let's take Ditch 35 Mr. and make Chair, it something we're really proud of up. and get some good. So thank okay. you very much. Yep. Thank you, Jody. Thank you, Your Jody. Time's up. Thank you. Um, do we have anybody else that wishes to speak? Uh, go ahead. Come and give your name. State your name. And <clears throat> My name is Jim Shule. I'm from Mapleton. I'm uh, one of the landowners that are on the end of the ditch. Um, it's very frustrating. Uh, I, I've lost uh, faith in our engineers. Uh, why wasn't this discussed two years ago? Uh, we've come to the final end and now we're going to start over again. It, it looks like a a uh, lack of a better term, a job justification. Um, pretty disappointing. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to come forward or anybody on Zoom? All right. Then again, do we have anybody else wishing to come forward to speak? Chair people, we have two people on Zoom that would like we to have, talk. Okay. Um, take the, anybody there on Zoom we should speak? Um, yes. Me, yep. Go ahead. State your name. And Ed. My name is Don Arnosky. I am representing, I live in St. Paul, Minnesota, 1722 Princeton Avenue, and I'm representing the Friends of the Minnesota Valley, which is a uh, group that cares deeply about the water quality of the whole entire Minnesota River. And we have members throughout uh, the entire watershed. Um, if I may share my screen to show a brief PowerPoint. All right. Is that possible? Uh, if it works. <clears throat> okay. Um, we, I have uh, a few points to make, and then my colleague who works with the uh, Isaac Waldley, Philip Solsing, will speak after I do. So I will limit my remarks to three minutes at the most. Um, we have a few points that we would like to have you consider before you make decisions. And I understand you're continuing this project at this point in this hearing. But we'd like to point out that the Minnesota River is already full and dollar damages are already occurring in Mankato because of cumulative increased drainage throughout the watershed, not just coming from Blue Earth County. We'd like to also point out that uh, we believe, and Philip is an engineer and he'll go into the reasons, we believe that the modeling for the final engineering report does not account for all the flows and that appropriate flow and backup information should be provided by rerunning the model. Philip will go into that in more depth. Uh, the failed ditch slopes, we recognize are a very significant problem and we agree with and, and certainly support the idea that they should be addressed. However, uh, the proposed solution requires additional modification to minimize instability and further sedimentation into the Minnesota River. We would like to ask you to please order an environmental assessment worksheet to gather more information before making a decision because we are concerned about the downstream impacts of what is happening uh, or what is proposed to happen with this project. Um, I'd like to show you this graph on the uh, right of your screen there. You can see that the flow has increased, has more than tripled in the Minnesota River in this period from 1940 to about 19, uh, 2019. 
Um, this is the reason why we are dealing with much more serious water quality problems through this time. Uh, the city of Mankato has already, the taxpayers, have already had to pay $7 million or will be paying $7 million for a riprap project to protect the wastewater treatment plant. And there's been several million dollars already spent to armor or protect the water treatment plant, the intake water treatment plant. Um, as a result of these high water uh, and continuing high flows that we're seeing, you received a letter from the downstream county of Dakota, which has the largest stretch of the Minnesota River along its borders, and Minnesota River and the Mississippi River. They are very concerned about the cumulative decisions that are made, not only in your county, but throughout the entire watershed. And they're asking you to please take into account those downstream effects which affect their resources, their taxpayers, and everybody living there. I'd like to- Mr. Chair, that's on. time. No, oh, okay. that's time. Thank you. Go um, ahead, uh, Bill, please. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Don. Did you go to the next slide? Yes. Okay, this, this slide shows the hydrographs of the runoff and table volumes for the uh, two year, three to 100 year rainfall events in there from Appendix F of the uh, lower CD35 final engineering report. These runoff volumes only include the surface runoff, do not include infiltration that is being intercepted by the drain tile system. Do a click on. The uh, <coughs> infiltration is added to the outflow hydrograph. It could be added to the receding side of the hydrograph and look at something like this red line. The other flow would continue for several days, and the extended duration of the flow will erode the ditch banks and contribute sediment to downstream public waters. The model it should be modified to include. The infiltration is intercepted by the drain tile system. The Minnesota Department of Natural Resources requested that uh, changes be made to the model and that the model be rerun. And the effects of these corrections into the proposed model to evaluate uh, to be evaluated before the project is approved. If you look at the, uh, the total volume of drainage, it will double from what is shown on the table uh, with, the, uh, with the additional uh, infiltration of groundwater. Next slide. Um, this second item of concern is the proposed repair of portions of the open ditch that have experienced bank failures without the addition of any measures to prevent future bank failures. The slide on the left shows a photograph of a bank failure at station 66, and a copy of the same station is shown on the right. It shows that the bank um, will be, the proposed slope will be unstable. It will be similar to what the existing bank is, except it will be slightly steeper and slightly deeper, which will make it more unstable. And these bank failures are likely caused by erosion of the flow of the slope and groundwater inflow into the ditch after water level dried out. To prevent continued sedimentation from County Ditch 35 to downstream public waters, the slope of the ditch banks need to be much flatter or the lower portion of the ditch needs to be stabilized with some form of the erosion. And this will protect the Minnesota River and the Maple River from additional sedimentation. Next slide. So I think in, in summary, we request that uh, we store water in the Blue Earth River watershed, a new increase in the volume to the Minnesota River. The Minnesota River is already full and damages are already occurring. We request that you modify the hydrologic model for the DNR request and the February 14th technical memorandum to the Isaac Bolton League and that the existing hydraulic model does not account for the extended duration of flow. We request that you repair sloughing along County Ditch 35 and the open ditch to minimize future sloughing by using appropriate ditch slopes 
and it was protection to minimize sedimentation and calming this kind of bottom of the Minnesota River. And we also requested to order EAW to gather more information before a decision is made. So in summary, I'd like to thank you for your consideration. And uh, I'm Philip Solsey, and I represent the uh, high school debate as a technical expert. Thank you. Do we have anybody else wishing to comment? So just briefly, Chair, if I could, Dean Zimmerly. Okay. State your name and address. Uh, thank you. Dean Zimmerly, Justice and Hunter, um, attorneys um, on, on behalf of the Yeager properties and the Joan Yeager Trust <coughs> property. Um, I just wanted to, you know, to say on behalf of my clients that we're not uh, necessarily um, opposed to a solution for um, some of the problems that have been on CD35, which we don't necessarily want to stand in the way of, um, of you know, this project in some form. We just want to make sure that, um, you know, the solutions um, are, and, and the project, you know, is consistent with the drainage code and, um, and isn't, you know, unfair to my clients and their property. Um, so I would encourage the board to continue this so we can continue working with um, Mr. Randall and the uh, engineers at ISG to hopefully come up with a solution that um, will work and address those concerns. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else wish on Zoom? Okay. Otherwise, yeah, go, go ahead. Um, just state, state your name. and Orville Gartner of Mapleton. Okay. I have property right on... Uh, right on ditch 35 we've been at this project for two and a half maybe three years already we've had engineers look at this many different times everybody comes up with a different flow how many engineers how many figures do you need before you can agree on one whether it's the county's engineer private engineers who it is whoever makes up these numbers you can always come up with a different number if you just do one little thing different and you'll come up with different flows. The, the dollars that we already spent on this project should soon come to an end. And I realize we are not going to, everybody's not going to be happy with the end results. But somehow along, we've got to keep moving on or these prices get out of hand just like they have already. Either that or you've got to forget about the project sometime in time. And I don't know if that's what they're after to just forget about the project. But you got to remember what we started with was to get some of this sediment out of the thing, out of the rivers, because the banks are sloughing in. Okay, if we're doing that, we should be satisfying some of these people that always say we need clean water, which we do. I agree with that 100%. But sometime, I don't know when we come to a conclusion, but sometime we've got to make a decision to do these projects or else not even start them. I don't know which, which we got to do. But dollars and cents do come into these projects someplace along the line. And I hope that comes, that comes about before too long. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, then. Is anybody else wishing to speak? Uh, okay, if not, uh, um, we will uh, uh, we'll close that on public comments and questions and bring it back. Uh, bring being there's no further comments, I'll close the public comment portion and bring the items back to the board for further action. Mr. Chair, uh, a, a couple questions. Okay. Uh, um, certainly, uh, I'm going to support uh, uh, tabling this. We need some more continued uh, constructive conversations. But uh, I mean, I firmly believe we've got to fix this erosion, um, reducing the sediment. That's that's important. Uh, you know, if we have to go back and look at different options, we can do that. I know there's a lot of options. I can remember as a young kid, uh, you know, our 126-year-old family farm, I asked Grandpa, well, why does the ditch go right across the neighbor's property and not, not in ours? It's because we paid more to put the county ditch on the property line and, and things like that to make it easier to farm. I understand nobody likes things going right through. Um, but maybe we're going to have to look at options of, of, of moving the ditch or something to, to make that work. Um, we, we've got to fix the sediment. That, that's really important. Um, 
And I'm going to support uh, a motion to, to table when that's appropriate. Okay. Mr. Chair. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with Commissioner Papp. I think we do got a couple other things we got to clear up here. And with the information we got today, I would entertain a motion to table this to a time uncertain at this point. And we will re-notice when time is appropriate. Okay. And we have that motion. Do we have a second then? I will second. Kevin, Kevin will se second that motion. Uh, okay. All those in favor signify by say by aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Um, at this point, this concludes the County Ditch 35 public hearing. I have no further notice. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Thank you, Thanks yes, for, for your comments. time you. and for your comments. Can we just take? Yep. Uh, we just gotta let the room change up a little bit. Thank you. Man, you got it. Okay. This is a good Yeah. 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 Got everything. Well, I knew it was going to come together somewhere. This is the primary dish. Morning, Michael. Good morning, morning Michael. Mike. Yes, we'll continue here. Uh, I guess you're here. Uh, introduce yourself, and then we'll start. Your watercraft water, inspection. water, water, watercraft inspections. Yep. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Commissioners. Uh, for the record, Michael Stolberger, Director of Property and Environmental Resources for Blue Earth County. Uh, today, I bring forward three items, and I believe the first item in your packet is the watercraft inspections <coughs> service agreement. Uh, so this would be an annual renewal of the agreement uh, that the county has with Water Guards LLC. Uh, they conduct, and for the last six years now have conducted our watercraft inspections amongst the county's lakes at our public access points. Uh, this agreement uh, and your resolution would authorize the county administrator to sign that agreement for another year's worth of service. The service is structured as such that we get 2,000 hours of inspections uh, at all of our public access points uh, across the county's lakes. Uh, that will uh, be at a maximum cost of $50,408 for this uh, season. The season runs uh, through uh, uh, fishing opener for walleye in May through Labor Day, and it can extend beyond Labor Day if the season and the weather supports that and there's a demand for it, and we still have money left in that $50,000 allotment. Uh, we've been very pleased with the services that uh, Watercraft or Water Guards has provided us the last several years. Uh, we do structure the agreement to make sure that we have over half of our hours on weekends and on holidays, which is the time that we can best educate and inform boaters and also do the inspection. So we've made sure that they, uh, they staff those boat landings appropriately. Uh, you'll see uh, that Scott Salisbury manages this program for us in our department and he provided some statistics for you. Uh, 2021, we were actually down in the number of inspections completed uh, compared to our overall average for the first five years of the program. Uh, that was also a trend that was recognized statewide. We wanted to make sure that we just didn't have inspectors who weren't uh, completing inspections, um, but it, it turns out there were just fewer boaters uh, hitting mm -hmm. the waters in 2021 across the state. And then also locally, we can remember, uh, we had some road construction around one of our busier lakes, Madison Lake, so that probably limited some interactions uh, for some boaters as well. But as I mentioned, we're overall very pleased with the program. Uh, we find it is a cost-effective way to educate, inform, and then also uh, look for uh, any potential issues that would bring invasive species to our waters here in Blue Earth County. So I will answer any questions that the board might have, Mr. Chair. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I would request um, authorization uh, for us to enter into that agreement with Watercraft or for the county administrator to sign that. So moved. Okay, it's been moved by Kip. There a second? Second. Second by Vance. Uh, any discussion, questions? Looks good program. Good. Yep. It seemed to be working well, so. All right, if there's very no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, carries. Thank you, Michael, on that. Very good, Mr. Chair. The next item then mm -hmm. in your packet is going to be uh, a Board of Water and Soil Resources Well Sealing Grant Agreement. Uh, Blue Earth County has uh, for many, many years, since 1991 at least, 
uh, supported efforts that would protect our ground and drinking water throughout the county. A very successful program uh, that we've implemented through a cost share agreement with property owners uh, where we'll get uh, wells sealed uh, to protect that groundwater and drinking water. Over the last uh, 30 plus years, we've um, allocated $408,000 plus to help seal over 1,300 wells across the county. Uh, and most of that is through dollars that the county board authorizes annually for a local cost share program. For example, in 2022, uh, the board has authorized us to allocate $9,200 uh, towards that program. That program is hugely successful. Uh, we always run out of those monies. Uh, they come on a first come, first serve basis. And so uh, Tim Grant in our office, who manages this part of our operation, uh, looked for an opportunity to get a grant from the Board of Water and Soil Resources. Uh, they provided us funding uh, through a 2022 Clean Water Fund grant for $30,000 to complete additional well sealing. Uh, that will also be a cost share program and we'll have through the end of 2024 to utilize those dollars. Uh, we've been the beneficiary of other Bowser grants in the past for the same sort of program. Those dollars always get spent. Uh, there are plenty of wells left in Blue Earth County to seal, and those are direct conduits to our drinking waters and our other aquifers. So uh, sealing those up it goes a long way to protect the health of folks, as well as the health of our land and our, our streams and waters. So uh, what we would be looking for here is uh, the board uh, authorizing a approval and acceptance of the 2022 Bowser Clean Water Fund grant. Um, I would be the delegated authority for that, so I'd be able to sign all of those individual agreements with individuals, uh, property owners, uh, provided the board uh, agrees with that and, and uh, authorizes that. So we'd be looking for a motion to approve that, Mr. Chair, or any questions I'd be happy to answer as well. Okay, it's been moved by Vance for Second. both. For both uh, items, okay. Any discussion? Mr. Chair, okay. I guess I would just say I, I appreciate uh, um, this opportunity. When I hear we're always running out of money, that's a good sign. Uh, that means the program is working, the system works, and things like that. Um, I'm not sure, you know, the match and the maximums are set. I think that covers a lot of, of wells, but I do know um, from a personal perspective, there are other wells out there that you can't get them sealed for that reasonable, depending on the well construction and things like that. And as we look at some wells in our county, I've got one, I'll fully transparent, where my estimate was probably $4,500 to seal it um, versus that. Now we're looking at a match of less than 25% on those. And I guess we want incentive for those types of wells in the county to be sealed as well. So just kind of that point of information um, it really depends on the type of well as far as what, what the cost is and as it has to be pulled up, if it's been jacketed and all that lingo, I don't truly understand. I just understood you when just, they said $4,500 or more. You just pay the bill, yeah. Exactly. So, thank and you. And Mr. Chair, if I can add, Commissioner, uh, that's one of the beauties of this program through Bowser is so that $1,000 match and the maximum are only for the county dollars. So we would be able to leverage county dollars and match that and we can bring more money to some of those wells that are in those most strategic places that we want to make sure we get sealed that are costing significantly more than a normal mm -hmm. well. So Bowser gives us a little bit of flexibility. We still have to have a match of some sort we can find some ways to be flexible with that so because there's a lot of those instances hmm. the other thing i'll mention too there is um we have lots of folks who want wells sealed we're having trouble finding sealers for wells um, and so there's a backlog to even get them sealed um, so hopefully we'll be able to locate some folks to help us move even more uh, through that process okay thanks so. thank you michael uh, then we have at this point um you got the redistricting plan? Oh, yeah. we we need to vote. Need a oh, did, oh, that's right. We, did, we, got yeah. it. we, we already have it. Yeah. We already have it, but I didn't have your vote. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, all those that understand it, so all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed carries. Um, and that's, yeah, for vote on the signatures on vote. Um, all right. Then we have, yeah, the redistricting plan. Sure, public Trey, hearing. We're just excited Set? to move on to this one, weren't you? <laughs> oh, oh, did I miss the well seat? Oh, no, no, we're good. good. Yeah, we're good. Uh, I just. <laughs> All right, you're just excited about redistricting. Nah. <laughs> I understand it. I'm there with you. Uh, so, <laughs> the third item that we bring, the final item we bring forward from Property and Environmental Resources today, is uh, setting a public hearing for the Blue Earth County redistricting plan. As you're well aware, uh, we're completing the redistricting for Blue Earth County Commissioner uh, seats, uh, and that's a result of the 2020 census. So, this is a once every 10 year activity for us. 
Uh, Minnesota law is pretty clear in what we have to do uh, for redistricting, and that includes establishing a public hearing uh, before the board can officially act on their redistricting plan. The purpose of that public hearing will be to consider the plan uh, or plans that are being brought forward for uh, redistricting opportunities, and then eventually uh, you'll approve one of those plans to set the five commissioner districts uh, moving forward. Uh, we have um, worked as a department to bring information forward. We've shared some of that with you at work sessions, and uh, we are also going to be conducting an open house next Tuesday afternoon, 4 to 7 p.m., where we'll be able to gather some public feedback on any of the redistricting plans or get their input. Uh, but we would still need to officially have a public hearing, and that's uh, what we're requesting the board set right now. Uh, for some reason, this uh, public hearing requires three weeks' notice, which is different than the normal notice. Okay. Um, and so we are still going to be compliant with that if uh, you pass that resolution today and we conduct that public hearing on April 5th, uh, 2022, at 9 a.m. Uh, as part of uh, the commissioner meeting that day. I'll move approval. Okay, it's been moved Second. approval for the redistricting plan. And then uh, fan seconds. Any discussion, further discussion? So that would be April 5th and at 7. Uh, April 5th at 9 a.m. Uh, the open I mean house will be uh, yeah. next Tuesday from 4 yeah. to 7. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed carries. Thank you, Michael. Thank Anything Michael. else? Yeah, thank, you. thank you, Mike. All right. Thank you. And we have, well, <laughs> Ryan. I guess we have Ryan. You're taking the. We've got a lot of action yeah. items. Today. Yeah. You're bumping, a lot you're of bumping your. On in the public yeah, you're board. bumping Stefan today? Yeah, what's happening with Stefan now? You're he was prepared to take the bullet for me like any good, uh, good assistant. And uh, it was actually supposed to be in a jury trial today, but that was canceled. So oh. fortunately, I'm able to be here and present this to you. Hmm. Hmm. I right. apologize that he's not here. I he think yeah, 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 that's kind of where I we're at, right? I think you'd rather that's be right. here than at <laughs> yeah. the trial, yeah. right? I agree. All right. Um, <coughs> the first action item on our agenda is consideration of bids for the 2022 maintenance gravel crushing contract. Uh, only one bid for crushing was received this year. It was uh, 23 cents per ton lower than our 2021 pricing. We, we did receive an additional inquiry, but there were some legality concerns with the bidder on, they asked what we thought was a fairly common question, but their legal, I think, had concerns over that that might be considered uh, something questionable, so they decided not to put a bid in this year. Um, it's peculiar. That's partially why we only received one bid, but with it being lower than last year's prices, I would certainly recommend approval. Yeah, I guess. Hmm. I would move to approve. Cool. Mance moves to approve gravel crushing. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Okay, any discussion? Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed carries. All right. All right. Action item number two is a resolution for the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources Outdoor Recreation Grant. This is an application for the Bray Park playground equipment replacement near the beach area. Staff has completed a draft outdoor recreation grant application for this playground equipment replacement uh, for some mill prior to March 31st, 2022. The county is requesting approximately $60,000 of state funds as a 50% match of the project cost. So with that, I would recommend approval of the resolution included in the board packet. Hey, do we have a move to approve? Second. Vance moves and Kip seconds the Minnesota DNR outdoor recreation grant. Okay. Any discussion? All those then in favor say aye. 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 Opposed carries. Okay. Moving right along. Action item number three consideration of bids for state aid project 007 607 011. This is for county state aid highway 7 reconstruction in Mapleton from Borkard Street to approximately one half mile south. The engineer's estimate was $1.28 million, and the apparent low bid was. $1,202,342.75 from WW Blacktop. They were 6.1% under the estimate. And as you can see, we received seven total bids, so a lot of interest in this relatively small project, uh, ranging from, again, 6.1% under the estimate to 28% over the estimate. Uh, WW did complete the County State Highway 57 North Riverfront Drive roundabout interchange at Highway 14 last year. Uh, 
good experience working with them. I would recommend award of this contract to WW Blacktop. So moved. Okay, it's been moved by Kip. Second. Second. Second by Kevin. I Is made it? Um, three put to a vote. I'm sorry, I should have passed this around earlier. Is the bid tabulation if you'd like to look at it? Uh, okay. Uh, Yeah, well, <laughs> that's <Pretty> larger. <laughs> I can certainly get you digital format if you'd like. I just get my magnifying glass out, but we're uh, <coughs> uh, okay. I don't know. Are we ready? We have the motion. Yeah, we have the motion in front of us. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Post carries. All hey, right, can't you get that a little bit smaller? Yeah, yeah, I could try. Careful, what you ask. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I appreciate he's trying to save paper. Yeah, it's like the 11 cents a sheet, we're looking out for that. <laughs> there you go. All right, so I, I have a motion and uh, approval on that one. Yep. All right, we'll move on to uh, a little bit bigger one for you to read. Consideration of bids for state aid project 007640005, County State Aid Highway 40, New Bridge, number 07595. This one's a little bit different story. The uh, engineer's estimate was $404,224. The apparent low bid of the three received was from m &K Bridge Construction out of Walnut Grove, $512,428, or 26.77% over the engineer's estimate. Um, I would remind the board that this project is partially funded with state bridge bond dollars, which does help us in addition to our county, state, and highway or local option sales tax funds that we use to complete this. So. Uh, bridge projects, we knew we were going to be a little bit of an anomaly this year, especially given all the market um, influences that we're seeing. With that being said, we have the state dollars to assist on the 50% match for half of the bridge cost, so I would recommend approval and moving forward with this project. Okay. Move to approve. So moved by Vance. For the, uh, Second. Seconded by Kip. Any discussion regarding the so new bridge? Why, I mean, I understand a lot. Of, there's there's so many changes coming right now with price of gas and, mm. and labor and everything like that. Is that what is that what's causing the big upsurge in? in I uh, would certainly think it's it's got a heavy impact. Um, we've looked at our, our abstract of bids and we didn't see any specific item that really jumped out and bid us. Like it's just the beams or just the bearings or. Um, I think you're seeing the fuel cost and speculation go into all the materials. It's gonna, yep. You're seeing lead times being drawn out excessively, so that's impacting price. Um, labor costs are obviously up. Uh, the, the cost of doing business is dramatically spiked with all of the, all of the things that are happening in the world. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I, I wish I had a better answer. Yeah. Tomorrow. Well, it's kind of all. yeah, kind of expected here. Uh, any other discussion? Okay, we had a motion in front of us. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Okay, aye. and I, I would probably remind the board too. Uh, I believe last month I brought forward that we are getting a significant increase in our county state highway allocation, um, and the reason I didn't want to program another project was specifically because of this concern that we're going to see significant. Hit us on our, our bids as we continue to open them. So, yeah. action item number five is consideration of bids for state aid project 007605 020 and others. This is for our 2022 bituminous overlays. The engineer's estimate was $3,342,868.74. Minnesota Paving and Materials was the apparent low bidder at $3,000. $693,192.58 or 10.48% over the engineer's estimate. Central Specialties was the second and high bid, 26.64% over the engineer's estimate. Again, this one is, I think, directly attributable to fuel price increases because as we know, uh, asphalt cement is a petroleum product. The aggregates, the trucking associated with it, um, and then obviously labor increases are, have been fairly difficult to predict. But 
Uh, with that being said, I would recommend an award to Minnesota Paving Materials. Okay. I'll move approval. It's been moved by Kip. Is there a second? Second. Second by Kevin. Any further discussion? That should, uh, hmm. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Okay. Right. Action okay. item number six, six is consideration of state aid project <coughs> 007-598-031. This is a local, local bridge replacement program grant agreement for the replacement of the County Road 169 bridge. The grant amount is $519,224 or 100% of the bridge replacement cost. The Blue Earth County cost share is $258,491 for approach grading costs. So on County State Aid Highways, we get local bridge replacement money. It covers 50% of the bridge cost. On County Roads, it covers 100% of the bridge replacement cost. With that being said, I would recommend approval of the local bridge replacement program grant agreement for County Road 169. Moved to approve. It's been moved by Vance. Second? Second. Okay, by Kip. Where's that? Where's 169 then? That uh, that's uh, south, south Central, I guess I would say, just if I remember correctly, northeast of Mapleton. Oh, bit. okay. Yep. Okay, I haven't get out there enough. Uh, okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed carries. All right. Are your um, engineers figuring the, the increase of petroleum and stuff right now? I well, mean, I, I know it's always hard, always hard to guess, but yep. uh, we're, we're I would, when you're, when you're getting your estimates out there, you know, it'd be, it'd be good to say, okay, what's, what's coming down the pike and. Right. Um, so with our bituminous overlay pricing, for instance, we look and we go, Last year's pricing was this much, and we have to somewhat speculate because this was a relatively early bid being out in in February at opening and being ready for a March board meeting. So theoretically, we should be getting better prices, so it'll probably continue to get more expensive the longer anybody waits. Um, we use past pricing as our index, and then we add on typically, uh, say, 5%. Well, in this case, we should have added probably at least 10% on. So it's, it's speculative, and it's a little bit of a of uh, art, not so much a science, because it's difficult to come up with some, what some of those costs are going to be. Yep. When we go to prepare um, estimates for, say, County Road 11 or 12, one of those projects coming up, we'll certainly adjust our engineers' estimates to reflect um, what what we're seeing to ensure that we, we've got adequate budget and, and capital mm -hmm. within our program and revenues coming in. All right. Thank you. Yep. <coughs> Action item number seven is consideration of a project sponsor agreement between Blue Earth County and the City of Mapleton. The City of Mapleton was a successful recipient of a local road improvement program grant. Um, I was able to work with the city on their application and give them some assistance, and they were they were one of the only successful recipient in Blue Earth County. Um, as you may recall, we put in two grant applications ourselves. I believe there were two city applications and two or three township applications, and this was the sole. Uh, mm -hmm. winner. So fortunately we are getting some of those dollars to work within Blue Earth County and helping our small cities. Uh, this is for the reconstruct reconstruction of Borkert Street adjacent to the new K-12 school. Um, mm -hmm. So as part of these grant dollars, Blue Earth County has to act as the project sponsor, meaning we actually end up becoming the contracting agency and the contractors contract for that work goes through Blue Earth County. We make project payments. We would delegate the project management and construction inspection, et cetera, to the city because we just don't have people to do it and it's not our road. Um, but that's one of the things we agreed to when the city did apply for these funds. So this document is very similar to what you see in many of our other cooperative agreements. It just puts a lot of the onus on the city to perform contract administration, et cetera, and makes us the agency that will be responsible for the contract and the pass-through of funds. With that, right. I would recommend approval. All right. So moved. Kevin moves. Second. Right. And Kip seconds. Any discussion, questions? All right. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. All right. Thank you. Uh, action item number eight is consideration of approval of the 2022 to 2026 Transportation Improvement Plan. The plan has been updated to reflect the updated and renewed county stated highway allocations. 
increased funding has been shown uh, again as contingencies as we discussed as always this is a roadmap it's subject to change but this gives us a vision of what our future projects are and gives staff direction as far as uh, what our objectives are and how we program these projects and program our funds the local cities have been contacted about any projects that they have in the CIP and they're as always they're not obligated to a cost and until mm -hmm. we really get to a point where we develop an intent to cost participate agreement and they're certain that they need to move forward or want to move forward with the project um, some are put in there maybe one is in there as illustrative the rest of them the cities would like to move forward with those projects pending any financial setbacks or anything of that nature um, no public comments were received we did a, an online outreach as well as notifications in the free press you know, it's typical for these types of documents. People don't generally get too mm -hmm. excited about planning level documents until you've got a project in their backyard or front yard. <laughs> Great. So with that, I would recommend <laughs> approval of the 2022 to 2026 Transportation Improvement Plan. So okay. it's been moved by Vance. Second. Second by Kip. Any further qu questions, discussion? All right, all those in favor, I say aye. 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 Opposed, carries. All right, just some quick project updates for you. County Road 151 bridge replacement. Staff is still wrapping up approach grading plans, and we'll be getting those in the MnDOT submittal for their approval, likely a summer bid with construction in the late summer, early fall. We've kind of spaced out our bridge replacements, having three of them this year to allow staff to have time to properly cover them. County Road 7 in Mapleton. The project should begin as soon as conditions are fit this spring. Uh, we may end up utilizing consultant staff to help us with construction inspection because of the workload that our staff is facing. So we're coordinating that. County State Highway 10 and 72 in Vernon Center. Project approval is still pending. As you may recall, this was being led by the city's consultant engineers at SEH. Project approval is still pending. USDA RD review at this time. Deed review is also necessary prior to bidding any of the documents. Uh, and the city staff is hopeful to begin bidding the project by the end of the month. But I guess that's going to be highly dependent on their progress with plan approvals. So we're still hope to, hopeful to get that out and see where they come in with respect to the project budget. CASA 11 from 20 to 68. Plans are approved. Right of way acquisition is still underway. It's moving along fairly well. We tentatively plan to open bids on April 27th for a May 3rd award. And I guess the same could be said for CASA 12 from 26 East to CASA 2 with a April 27th bid opening and a May 3rd award. CASA 16 from Lesur River to 90 plans are under the design for summer bidding with work to be completed in 2023. And 16, I'm sorry, I just did that one, 13 from 169 to 1 project design is underway with SRF. That's again a 2023 project. Uh, we did develop some preliminary alignment improvements where we want to improve curvature to a 55 mile an hour standard, improve site distances. And um, we've identified those different alignment repairs, and now we'll be coordinating those with the landowners that will be impacted by them. Good morning, Commissioner. Oh. Casa 26 from 57 to 22. Project design is beginning with Bolton and Mink. Currently, a trail is planned for on the south side of the road from Mary Lane to Highway 22, and we intend to use wayfinding signage to direct people uh, via Country Club Drive to the trail section on Augusta Drive that would provide them with a trail or low volume road connection to the um, trail segment that connects to the Minnesota River Trail on the west side of the project. We looked at trying to maybe go under Casa 57 and Lion Valley Road and that would be extremely disruptive, extremely expensive. It'd be really cool to get done, yeah. um, but I think right now it's just not in the cards budgetarily to put that kind of investment into that trail connector without knowing if there's adequate volume to really support it. So this would also offer connecti connectivity across Highway 22 to the eastern segment of the Sakata Trail. Kind of a nice. So, uh, my last item is just a friendly reminder about the annual Joint County Board and Park Advisory Committee meeting that's going to be held on March 24th at 6 p.m. <coughs> in Good Thunder at the Thunder mm -hmm. Restaurant. Plan, so we'll plan to be there. there. Plan to be there. Okay. Uh, we'll enjoy some updates on our Emerald yeah. Ashmore management plan. It's, it's riveting stuff. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Plan to be there. All right. Hey. Any questions about. before I leave? 
Any any questions of Ryan? All right. I do not. Thank no. you for those reports. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh. What are we hearing on weight restrictions? As to when they come off? Yep. Or when they go on? When I guess they I go on. Say. Haven't seen it yet, so um, it's always a little bit of a gamble, but it should be coming out, I would anticipate, within the next week or two. I do know temps are looking like they're going to start getting into the 40s next week, it looked like. Yeah. Do you get any advance notice of that? Uh, Nothing more than what the public good. gets that, okay. that they're going on in four or five days. And right, that but we're we still have that time. opportunity to, if you do need to move something from one area to the other to get Prior that done to, before. Yep. Um, I can certainly let you know when I do hear something, but it's it's probably about the same time that it'll be published yep. through other media. So, yep. Okay. Good. Right. Anything else? Thank you much, Ryan. Thank you. Very, Thanks, Ryan. Very useful. Helpful. All right. Um, can you get? Uh, <coughs> can we get our um, our county attorney to talk in what five minutes or so? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, Mr. Chair, I'll make it uh, easy to you there. I have nothing really to supplement to the report, but if anybody has any questions, okay. I'd be more than happy to answer them. Anybody have any questions of Pat? Oh, it's a good I report. Don't. Good report. Looked it over. So uh, with that, um, I take a short break. Should we take a short break and mm then -hmm. conclude? Get our clean up to snuff on everything. 15 minutes. Here. All 15? right, 15, 15 sure. minutes. All right. Ten dead. Recess till then. Okay, 10, 15. Ten. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll continue, I guess, with um, Bob with administration. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The first item is county board minutes for February 22nd. So moved. And moved. There's second. Second. Moved and second on the county board minutes. Any questions? All right. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Right. Next are the bills for the two weeks indicated. I'll move the bills. Vance second. moves the bills. Colleen seconds. Any questions on any of the bills? You know, we haven't stumped the administrator for a while. Does anybody have one? I don't even have one, but I don't have any. I'm gonna get mm -hmm. that get that music yet. <laughs> Bring back the <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, all right. Um, all those in favor then of approving the bills? Aye. 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 Opposed carries. Human resources. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair and Commissioners, item number nine in your packet is the human resources department agenda. I do have a few action items for the board's consideration this morning. First is authorization for the chair and myself to sign an agreement with the Minnesota Public Employee Association uh, Probation Officers Unit. This is a, a collective bargaining agreement uh, just for one year for calendar year 2022. Uh, this particular group um, uh, went through mediation and this is uh, the result of our work there. We did end up with the same salary adjustment that uh, we have with other bargaining groups of $1.50 per hour. Some of the other uh, changes to the agreement is we did add language to the contract in the holiday section addressing Juneteenth, which would be considered a holiday if the state of Minnesota recognizes it as a state holiday. So it is not providing additional holiday time at this point unless the state of Minnesota makes a change as well. Otherwise, there's some language changes that we've done in other agreements uh, allowing the use of vacation time during the probationary period. We standardize some language in our funeral leave area as well as health insurance. Um, and we did agree to a couple other um, kind of procedural things outside the contract. Um, we have an assistant county probation officer position uh, that the union felt was not classified uh, properly and so we agreed to send that through our outside consultant to review that to make sure it is classified appropriately and if it, uh, adjustment is needed 
uh, we would bring it here to the board for uh, change. And then um, in terms of language in the contract regarding uh, probation officer two, we have language that says at least 50% of uh, the probation officers must be a PO2. We're agreeing to count the assistant probation officer and a temporary probation officer in that calculation, which would lead to an increase of one uh, probation officer, two, as a result of adding those positions in our calculation. So, again, no language change in the contract per se, but um, some kind of off um, cycle types of changes as a result of that. Okay. I'd be happy to answer any questions about the, that agreement. I would questions about Vance Moos, the public employees, and, uh, MP, probation Second. officers. Second. Yeah, it's been seconded by Clean. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? In the case, aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. All right. The next item is authorization to initiate recruitment for a park te technician three in our public works area. This is sort of along the lines of the um, maintenance technician one, two, and three um, uh, redo of uh, job descriptions that was brought to the board in the last month or so. We realized that we hadn't uh, adequately addressed the parks technician positions, and so uh, we needed to add this park technician three to kind of make it equivalent to our maintenance technician three position. So part of that overall um, review that we did and uh, adjustment of those technician positions in public works. Okay. Anybody? I'll move approval. Kip moves. Second? Second. 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 Second by Kevin. Uh, any more discussion? All those say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. The next is authorization to initiate recruitment for a children's services case aid. This is a position that has um, been uh, in the Human Services Department for a few years now under a temporary um, agency agreement. So this has um, not been part of the FDE count uh, for the county, but it has been a position that uh, initially we weren't sure if it would continue. Now that um, it's been in place for a few years, we felt it was time to roll that over into a county position. Uh, the, the person that was in that position recently left the position and so felt appropriate to bring it forward to kind of get it converted over to a county FTE. All right. I'll move approval. Second. Clean moves approval, hands seconds. Uh, any more discussion? All those in favor, they say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. And we have some information. Under the informational items, then, we have filled a correctional officer in the jail. We've also filled a social worker in our child protection area. Uh, also filled a part-time correctional officer. Mm -hmm. And we have a change to a start date of our licensed center specialist. Uh, we have uh, initiated recruitment to uh, um, uh, fill a librarian position as well as a financial assistance <coughs> case aid. We then did receive a couple of resignations of correctional officers, so we've initiated recruitment to refill those positions. Um, I guess there's three of them there. Um, and then uh, received a resignation of a property environmental specialist uh, position, so we've initiated recruitment to refill that position. I'd be happy to answer any questions the board might have on those items. Any questions? Busy time. About? <coughs> All right. Well, Mr. Chair yes, and Commissioners, then item number 10 in your packet is a memo regarding a library board appointment. Um, Ms. Jeannie McGraw has completed serving her time, and so a Ms. Carrie Healy um, has indicated interest in joining the library board, and so bringing forward her name as an appointment to the library board uh, for a term that will go through January of 2025. Move to approve. I move advance to approve. Second. Change. And second by Kip. All right, are there questions? 
All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Mr. Chair and Commissioners, I have number 11 in your packet is the final financial status report for February 28th, so the second month of our fiscal year. You'll see our total revenues are $8.4 million against expenses of uh, $14.3 million. Um, so we're in that part of the year where we're uh, drawing down on fund balance to cover expenses until the first half property taxes are received. I draw your attention to the revenue aligns the interest on investments. You'll see we're at a negative eight hundred and uh, almost seventy thousand dollars. Most of that is a market valuation uh, change as a result of kind of some of the turbulence in uh, the markets today. Um, the line above that, the transportation sales tax, you'll see we're 8.7% above uh, collections in the prior year. So um, our transportation sales tax uh, collections uh, continue to remain strong. Other than that, uh, things are tracking pretty well. It's early in the year, obviously, so not a lot to um, discuss at this point. At the bottom of that first page is uh, the Ponderosa Landfill, the Enterprise Fund. You'll see there the total revenues are exceeding total expenses by about $200,000 at this point. Hmm. The second page then has our um, available cash and investment balances. Uh, you'll see at the top our total available funds sit at $67.6 million against our six-month need of 51.7 um, total county funds a little further down the page sits at uh, just over 127 million so um, continue to remain in a very solid financial position Be happy to answer any questions the board mm -hmm. might have any questions about looks all right uh, about as good as tumultuous times we are in. All right. Um, I guess with that, is that everything, Bob? That's all okay. I have, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, then, yeah, we're down to our uh, reports. Who's going to start today? I can start, Mr. Chair, if you'd like me to. Uh, we'll let you. All right. Okay. Well, mine's relatively short. I was out of town last week for a little while, but after our last uh, board work session, I did have a conference call with my legislative committee meeting. It was just all informational stuff. And then we had a pre-meeting. We're going to be meeting with uh, the senator this Thursday, I believe. So we talked a little bit about the items we're going to talk with her about. And then just dealing with uh, several things with some planning and zoning items that are coming up and have been done in the past and then our ditch stuff that we talked about a little bit this morning I've been busy with that for the last week or so that'd be my report mr. chair okay thank you uh, Kip and then I could well let's see clean now you want to give your last report sure mine's pretty small also um, on the 23rd, I had a Region 9 um, meeting that um, where we met with um, a gentleman from um, to talk about renewable energy and that type of thing. Um, EVs, the importance of that, um, how they're going to roll out the EVs, um, the charging stations. Um, so they want it accessible. Um, to the public and um, they want to work with the private sector to do that so it was an interesting conversation and um, more to come on that I'm sure um, I had an AMC board meeting on uh, Friday the 25th um, most of it was legislative and also looking at the strategic plan for AMC um, in the upcoming uh, three years on March 1st through the 3rd, uh, we had the AMC Legislative Conference. Um, so most of us were there, and it was a good conference. Um, and um, that's all I have, sir. Okay, thank you, Clean. Um, Vance. 
All right, on the 24th, I had a Zoom meeting with um, the uh, Blue Earth Nicola County um, Safe Roads on uh, speed messaging work, work group trying to get uh, a message out on how to get people to slow down, uh, watch for stop signs, use their seat belts. Um, the uh, pretty well known that um, the deaths across the state of Minnesota have risen almost 27 percent since COVID started. And uh, before that time, uh, we were on a decline. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's it's a uh, how do you how do you get the message out to people that there's other ways to uh, take care of your stress than taking take it out on the road. Um, on that note. I drove to St. Paul on Friday um, for my AMC board meeting. There was not one car that didn't pass me. And, and you were going speed limit or five over. Well, yeah, every I car passed. Pass you, me. except yeah. for the ones that didn't. All of them passed. Me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then, of course, we had our work work group or work session on uh, first. And then uh, uh, that afternoon, we headed up to the AMC Lunch <coughs> Conference that uh, we attended, the, the second and third. And then I had a uh, South Central TZD meeting yesterday. Um, uh, we, during our South Central meeting, we always have the, um, the deaths and the serious accidents that happen uh, given to us by the State Patrol. And, there was only two uh, since the last meeting, but it's still it has to do with speed, has to do with uh, failure to stop for stop signs. Uh, just you know, one one accident occurred because somebody was was trying to get away from another accident that they happened before, and then they passed a pickup and ran head on into another one. So, but. It's a uh, it's it's a process we're working on trying to trying to get people to drive safer and uh, you know and see what the issues are out there. But that's that's the end of my report. Thank you. Of course, in our new employees meeting this morning. Good night. So, um, yeah, I was going to say that. But and that was okay. that was very very nice to see uh, new staff and and uh, welcome them in. So. All right, thank you, Kelly. Vance, and then Kevin. Since our February 22nd board meeting uh, has already been mentioned, uh, participated in the AMC Legislative Conference, our Environment and Natural Resource Policy Committee met um, as part of that. I also uh, represented the county at the Lesseur One Watershed, One Plan meeting on uh, February 25th. March 1st, uh, Public Works, as we look at uh, CASA 13 realignment, and some things like that, orientation has, has been mentioned. And then pretty much my calls and conversations have uh, centered around uh, Ditch 35 and Ditch 56. That ends my report, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, Kevin. Uh, well, I just have to add, like the 25th of February, did have our Partners for Housing Board meeting, and then we did have our Pedal Pass Poverty the 26th. And we did raise over 90,000, um, yeah. not as much as we have, but more than some years, a little bit less, but appreciate everybody here that uh, contributed. Um, it was, uh, it was um, in the MRCI building where they allow the, um, I think they have the youth groups and stuff because they have netting up for even batting practice and stuff that was all up yet. So yeah, it's a fine, it's a good building, so I hope we can use it again. Um, we did our work session, uh, and that we had our the legislative conference um, Tuesday, Thursday last week, and that uh, we did meet a number of legislators, and, and uh, that was a good conference. We'll see what they do now, and, <laughs> and like uh, Vance, we did conclude with our new employees, and it looks like we have a good batch of good people that are yep, on board, so it's good. That concludes my report, and with that, um, I'll move to recess. Else? Move to recess.
Kip moves to recess. Second. Second. Colleen, and that's the lunch at 1020 Tavern. 1020 Tavern. Okay. Um, meeting adjourned. Thanks, Mark. Yep. Recessed. Recess, I mean. Recess. I meant to say recess.